With how bad the packs are across all the modes this year, I want to talk about something EA is actually doing right, and that's the coins they are giving us by just playing the game. Hello YouTube and welcome back to another NHL 25 video. Today I want to talk about something I don't think a lot of people actually are talking about, the amount of coins you earn each day or each week or even each month by just playing the game. And today I'll break it all down across all modes, XP, path and how much coins are we actually earning, let's say every single month, by playing the game in average let's say 1 or 2 hours each day. You can even play which mode you want, and I will not even talk about the rewards by just playing the game, completing the objectives, maybe wildcard, and so on. As always guys, if you're new to the channel, please smash that like button and subscribe, and let's dive into it. So I'm currently on my main account, and as you can see, I have 1.3 million coins, and I basically didn't spend any money because this is a no money spent account, I just played the game, I even didn't work the auction house, I have a very solid team, yes it may not be the best, but we did still made a choice and we actually picked up the first X Factor captain, we also have multiple MSPs and in general this team is not bad and you can easily play it offline and even online. So to share exactly how much coins are we earning by playing the game, I logged into my second account where I'm basically not completing every single objective, I'm not completing any moment so I can actually talk about it. Let's start with XP path. We all know that this is the first year we actually see it and also it's only season 1 so we don't know how the season 2 will look. Maybe they will give us more coins but if we just look at the season 1 then we know that it was 55 days long so everything I will talk about is for 55 days, so 7 weeks. So how much coins are we actually earning during this, let's say, season 1 XP path? The first coins are you getting at tier 4, so you only get 1000 coins. The next one is at tier 8, you get another 2000 coins. Then at tier 14 we get another 2500 coins. At tier 18 we get 3000 coins. At tier 23 we get 3500 coins. At tier 27 another 4000 coins. Then the next one will be at tier 34, 5000 coins. And at tier 38 we get another 5000 coins. And then we get another 5,000 coins also at tier 43. And at tier 47 we get another 5,000 coins. So as you can see the end goal obviously is the Eichel. Then we have all these packs which we all know and we probably also you're getting a bronze players. They all are tradable but I don't really think you will make any coins out of it. So by completing the XP path and I'm talking about just to get to the let's say level 60 you will earn yourself 36,000 K coins. And that's not a lot with this economy and how much the cards cost but it's also really doesn't ask you to do a lot. You play the game on your own pace, you complete it and I think pretty much everyone will get to the level 60 and that's 36,000 coins. I will not talk about any cards you can sell because I'm 100% sure yes multiple of these packs will include let's say bronze players so you probably will not make any coins but even if you decide to quick sell the bronze cards you still will make some coins and I know a lot of people in the community decide and they don't really want to do anything with their bronze players so they're just quick selling. You also will probably get some silver cards so any card above 75 is minimum 60 thousand coins so probably if you pull around I don't know additional 10 on this XP path you make another 60k coins if you pull more that's even more coins but let's say you are done with an XP path and by completing the XP path you also get a lot of objectives done. So that's where I'm heading next. So if you have a look at the objectives, every day we have a daily objectives which this year don't give you anything except the XP but you need XP to complete the XP path so makes sense. Then every Tuesday when EA is dropping the content we are getting let's say I'm calling them a player objectives because what I believe we will see every week there will be a random player we can earn by just playing the game completing the objectives and not only then we get let's say XP tokens or some random 77s which are untradeable so we cannot make any coins, we also are getting coins. So by completing let's say a player moments you get 2000 coins, 3000 coins, you get some randoms, randoms which can be used in the sets but that's not what the video is about so player moments each week will give you additional 5000 coins. Then the next objectives each week we will see will be the team of the week. If we look at the team of the week you get team of the week collectible, another some random players, collectibles, collectibles, collectibles and by completing everything you also only get the collectibles. So team of the week objectives don't give you really any coins. It is needed for if you let's say want to make any of the team of the week cards and some of them are good. I personally would suggest to not go and try to get these 82s as far as you're not farming a fodder to make any of the MSPs and exchange them. I would probably just save the collectibles and then let's say in a month or two EA drops the card you really really want. That's where you go in and trade in your collectibles because by let's say day 60 or week number 5, 6 you probably will have a lot of these collectibles. We also every week probably will see the hot game breakers because it's a big part of this year's content so I'm expecting to see it every single Wednesday and now let's have a look. 
So hot game breaker objectives. By completing 18 games this week, you get 3000 coins and you get another two and a half thousand coins by completing eight games. So that's another five and a half thousand coins. So basically at this point, we already have 10,000 coins by just playing the game. You don't really have to put a lot of effort. You can go and play squad battles and semi-pro difficulty. And that's where we are heading next. When I'm talking about the squad battles and semi-pro difficulty, let's say two minute periods, that's probably one of the main thing people are doing this year, because if you want to complete, let's say weekly competitive objectives and also are the objectives I really suggest everyone goes after because not only then they give you the best packs in the game, yes, these objectives give you better packs than let's say champs, you will earn a lot of coins and you will also earn a lot of tradable packs. So you probably will make even more coins than we are talking in this video about by just selling the players you get from these packs. And all these objectives is just winning the game. And the easiest and quickest way to do it is to go into the squad battles, play on semi-pro difficulty, two minutes period. And basically what I try to do is wait when EA drops every single objective and that's pretty much updates every single Thursday and then I only start to grind it. As far as I don't really need anything, let's say the fodder or I'm not trying to get extra cards to complete something. Other than that, I don't really want to go into the squad battles if I cannot like say tackle five or six objectives at the same time. So what I'm doing, I'm waiting when everything drops and then I'm going to the squad battles. Weekly competitive. Everything is just about the winning games and in total you have to win 30 games. Two minute periods doesn't really take you that much time. Let's say you can only play one or two hours each day or maybe you can just play over the weekend you can still get it all done. So by winning eight games, you get 5,000 coins. Then you get some packs. By winning 15 games, you get another 10,000 coins. By winning 25 games, you get another 15,000 coins. And then of course you get mega pack, you get elite pack, you get premium pack. And in general, there is a lot of packs you will be able to sell the players. And also by completing, I think one game or whatever you needed to do, you get another 2,500 coins. And the reason why I'm saying the weekly competitive objectives are the most important ones, because if you put your focus on just completing and winning 30 games, you will complete a lot of other objectives at the same time. So weekly competitive objectives each week will give you 32 and a half thousand coins. So if we only look at weekly competitive player and game breaker objectives, you already earn yourself 43,000 coins by just playing the game few hours a day. And 43,000 coins may not sound a lot because everything is very expensive, but you are just farming the coins in the background. That gives you some kind of, let's say, leverage when you want to build any of the MSPs or you just need to buy some of the 80 overall cards or 75s or anything like that. You eventually will earn players anyway by playing the games because if you complete the weekly player objectives, you will earn yourself on 84, probably 85, 86 as we go. And then you also earn some coins. Every Thursday, we also see the XP objectives, but they only give you XP. And a lot of people I saw on Reddit yesterday were saying that these are the most pointless objectives. I don't think people realize that they really need to focus on these objectives. Otherwise, they will not be able to really complete the XP path. And you need to do XP path if you want to get, let's say, more fodder. Even if that fodder is bad, you still will earn some coins eventually by selling those players. Also, every single event dropped on Friday, if it's a one week or two week event, will also have an objectives. I don't really remember seeing any of those objectives giving you a coins because most of the time you get some tokens, you get some players or something like that. Everything is untradeable, so you cannot really make any coins out of it, but you still have to play. The reason I'm, again, bringing this up because try to combine as many objectives as you can by playing the squad, but also rivals. Don't try to complete the objectives as soon as I drop because it means you will need to play more games. Again, if you want to play more games, it's up to you. If you have a lot of time, this video is mostly about people who can only play, let's say, one or two hours. So let's assume you can only play one or two hours each day and you only start really grinding the objectives on Thursday evening or Friday morning or whatever you want. Even if you only can play Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it's more than enough to complete every single objective by just trying to get those 30 wins in squad battles. And believe me, I am the person who hates playing squad battles, but this year is the first year where I can actually say that the offline grind and casual grind is more rewarding than anything else. So there is no need to go and grind champs because those packs are rubbish and we saw that. Yes, you can pull something good, but the odds of you actually pulling something good are very slim. You can end up in top 100 and get the same rewards as I would get when I get my nine wins. Playing rivals, you only get XP. So yes, XP is needed, but you can also get the same XP in squad battles. If you are someone who prefers playing real people and you have a lot of time, go and play rivals. If you don't have a time to actually try and get 30 wins in rivals, then the squad battles is the best place to get it done. Also, if you will play the game every single day or just the weekends, you will eventually complete some of the milestones. So we have score goals, make hits, take shots, and every single one will basically give you coins. I'm not talking and I will not count any of these coins towards what we will discuss later in the video. By scoring 100 goals, you will get 2,500. Then by scoring 150, you will get 2,500. 250 will be 5,000. You 
can see that the coins are just going up and up and up and up. And if we sum this all up, we are talking about thousands and thousands of coins you will earn by just playing the game. These milestones are not designed to be grinded in the first week. Eventually, don't rush yourself, play the game at your own pace, the way you like it, and you will complete it. All I want to do is just highlight that 3000 goals. 25,000, 3,500, another 25,000. If you're someone who really likes hitting people offline or online, 500 hits, 10,000 coins, 1,000 hits, another 15,000 coins, and so on. I can just keep going and going. We also have the power up and X Factor objectives, which also will give you a lot of coins. But in my opinion, the easiest one is take shots on goal. I already completed two of them, and this is the account where I'm not playing a lot. So next one is 500 shots. You get another 10,000 coins, 1,000 shots, and all you have to do is just go into the squad bottles and rookie mode, four minute periods, and just shoot the puck. It doesn't matter how many goals you score. If something goes in, you get more objectives done but if you're someone who don't really have anything else to do and you just want to grind the objectives that's the easiest way and believe me you will end up with a lot of coins the video was about how much coins are you actually earning each week so let's move away from the objectives and talk about the moments every week same with the objectives we also will see team of the week moments as you can see i didn't complete any of the moments but it doesn't mean that every week this is the moment you have to complete but by completing the team of the week moments you will end up with another 8,000 coins and yes they are on all star but but if you are like anywhere decent at the game, you can complete it. And you also need those collectibles we talked before. Another thing I suggest people do is these weekly hot moments. I know a lot of people think they're pointless and those packs don't give you anything. I personally pull a lot of good pulls out of these packs. And worst case scenario is just another bronze you can after exchange for someone better to after use in the set. If you look at the coins, you don't really get anything except when you get to the last one. And by completing the last one, you will get yourself an 82 overall player because you need that player to complete the player objectives and then you also get 1000 coins are those 1000 coins worth your time grinding and trying to get those objectives done in the moment probably not but in the end of the day if you're someone who is just interested in farming and getting as many coins as you can in the game because you're not spending money and you cannot work the auction house because your ping is awful and you cannot snipe anything then unfortunately this is the only way how you can make coins we also every single week have the hot game breaker moments and again this is my second account so i'm not really playing any moments here but every week if you complete every single moment not not only do you get some player packs and let's say collectibles or any other stuff, you also will end up with 2000 coins. In the last place, every week we can earn some coins. If we just look at the weekly stuff, it's wildcard. From what I've seen so far, every single week we pretty much get the same amount of coins. So the first tier is 1000 coins, tier number 5 is another 2000 coins, then tier number 7 is 3000 coins, then we get 4000 coins at tier 9, and then we get more coins, which is 5000 coins at tier 12. Not only then we get that end goal pack or whatever it is. Last week, let's say it was an X Factor. This week, it's a team builder. Who knows what it will be on Friday? We also earn 15,000 coins. Okay, I'm back on my main account. What I'm trying to say is that yes, EA took the packs away, so we really don't have that, I don't know, rush when we are opening the packs every single day. But let's be very real. Last year, when we was playing rival squad battles, the card value was way less than it's this year. Let's say you pulled an 80 overall, and that 80 overall probably went for, I don't know, 2,000 coins. This year, if you pull a 75 plus card, that that's like 6,000 coins, so it's way easier to get yourself coins. Also, everything is way expensive this year, but if we compare last year and this year, yes, probably 5,000 coins would buy you a player. This year, you cannot really buy anything for 5,000 coins, so the cheapest player in the auction house usually is around 6.5 thousand coins, and if we are talking about the 80 overalls, they're usually going for around 20 thousand coins, so you probably will need to spend more to buy someone to actually add to your team, but you can easily buy yourself, let's say, an 84 overall players around around 100k coins and you can earn yourself 100k coins pretty much in a week. I started the video with talking about the XP path and how much coins can we actually earn by grinding out the XP path. XP path is seven weeks long. If we complete every single objective every single week, wildcard and also competitive objectives, we will earn ourselves 69,000 coins every single week. And that doesn't include any cards we will sell. It doesn't include any milestones or any of the bigger objectives. By seven weeks, then we would end up with 483 thousand coins in seven weeks by just playing the game again it's pretty much like half million and don't forget you also will complete a lot of other objectives like milestones you probably will sell a lot of cards i'm 100 sure you
you probably will pull some big pulls in the competitive packs or any other packs you get by playing the game. I'm 100% sure to say that then by just completing the XP pad, playing the game at your own pace, you will end up with at least 1 million coins. The game is out for just a month and I already have 1.4 million coins which I will spend to improve my team and I will be able to actually get the players I like. I have a decent team, I can actually enjoy the game, so yes, we don't have a packs, but EA is giving us so much coins and so much fodder we can sell to actually have a very healthy coin balance every single week. And that coin balance will allow us to go into the auction house and just go and buy the players we like to try out. If it's an MSP or any other card, you just want to go buy, try it for a few games, even maybe you want to buy a player for your 30 wins in squad but also rivals, just for a week. Now we can actually do that. If you look at the prices, let's say Macklin Celebrini, 84 overall card, really decent stats, you can buy him for around 100k and you can earn 100k by just playing the game each week. So not only then EA is giving us a lot of players to add to our team, also some X Factors, team builders and stuff like that, they also are giving us enough coins each week to go and buy let's say one player and just try it out. This video was just basically to talk about the coins we earn in the game by just playing the game, by completing the objectives moments each week. Like I said, if you're good at the auction house and you have a good ping and you can actually go and snipe those cheap cards, then you can easily scrap all this because there is no easier way than this year to actually go and make coins by just sniping the players. You can snipe the let's say 75 overall cards and above for around 4,000 coins. So you can then after sell them for six and a half thousand coins and on pretty much on every single card you will be able to make at least one and a half thousand coins even after the tax. But if you are someone who lives somewhere far from the servers and you cannot snipe anyone then this is the only way how I can earn coins. And what I try to do, and I will probably try to do that until team of the year comes out, I'm not saving any cards I'm pulling in the pack. If it's untradeable, it stays in the collection. If it's a tradable card, I'll just go and sell it. There is no need for me to keep 80 overall cards in my collection, and then if the prices suddenly drop, because you never know what EA can do, those cards lose value. Okay guys, that's it for today's yapping video. I was trying to have a little bit different video where I just talk about what I see in the game. Also, I wanted to try to something more positive. Every single video I'm making is mostly talking about, oh my god, this is is again another thing EA did wrong but I think there is something positive about this game yes we all love packs everyone loves to open 20 packs each week but this year obviously we understood that EA is having a different approach the content is different the rewards are different and in general the game is not as we are used to it I hope you enjoyed today's video have a good one and see you on the ice